I want to speak to the uh, boron and calcium observation and potential balancing reactions. So uh, as you may be aware, we have done, if I can share uh, this, can you see what I'm showing here, this uh, gray area? Can you yes, see we that? See we see it, we see it. Okay, so this is a, um, a video of a sheet of aluminium in water, and I will turn on the ultrasound at 43 kilohertz. And within a few seconds of the sound starting, we get resonant uh, interaction and the production of uh, what, what was initially called two spots. And they, they find their locations and then they stay there and they work hard in those locations. So um, ultimately it ends up by cracking the aluminium uh, in specific zones. So it's a very simple experiment. It costs $35 and takes about 20 minutes to conduct and learn. Using that information, uh, we produce these structures, uh, which uh, are exactly and precisely the ratio of the yin yang. Absolutely. It, anyone can do this from five years and up. It's been replicated wild, widely. And when you run the experiment for a few minutes, you end up with a, the start of a breakdown. And you can see there's a vortex going this way around, which is the same ratio exactly as a spiral galaxy. And there's another vortex going the other way around. Okay. And when you zoom into these structures, uh, you have accretions. And, and it, it's, it's where the vortex comes and collides with itself. OK, it's not quite on the center point. It's off center. And if we look on one side here and I'm looking at the uh, analysis on this side, we have as much as 35 uh, percent by weight of boron in one spot on this central point and 31 percent again. Now, there is zero calcium on this side. On the other side, we have. Uh, similar, the, the, the spot here, which is under here, this is the carbon tape. So I have to look at the closest to the center point and it's off center. It's off center in, in a different way on the other side. But if we look at two spots here, we see that we have by weight 4.37% calcium and there is 0% boron. So on one side, if, if you imagine this was concentrating impurities in the reactor, you would imagine that this would have boron and calcium and this would have boron and calcium. But in fact, what you have is on this side, you have only boron and zero calcium. And on this side, you have only calcium and zero boron. OK, now, if we look at the Parkamov reaction tables, if we take the paramagnetic oxygen new, uh, molecule and the paramagnetic aluminium and we fuse them, we get isotopes of calcium with large net energy gains. And if we go and look at the fission, of aluminium uh, to boron uh, para, uh, to boron and oxygen, we end up with large negative mega electron volt gains, uh, sorry, losses rather. So what I'm suggesting therefore, is that on one side, the vortex is assembling matter, and on the other side, it is dissembling matter. And therefore, unless you can separate the two vortex ends, you will not gain excess You'll, in fact, have excess cooling on one side and excess uh, uh, heating on the other side. But the actual action occurs at an almost infinitesimally small point, and the nuclei is transferred from one to the other. Uh, and that is my point. So when you're observing, in this case, it's easier because we only have water, hydrogen, and oxygen, and we have aluminium. And so the calcium is heavier than aluminium and needs oxygen and the aluminium. And the boron needs to fish in the aluminium uh, and leads to the production of the oxygen that's, that comes on the other side. So I'm, I'm wondering if you are considering that these processes are balancing the reaction. I've observed this exact structure with the same exact proportions in Alexander Parkhamov's 225 day reactor. I've shared that widely at, at my presentation in ICCF uh, 22. I've shared the exact same structure on a Mars gas on a, a tungsten rod. I've, I've seen the exact same structure on a vibrating plate in a, a, a palladium coated vibrating plate. It, it's, it's ubiquitous. 
and you tend to find that the the heavier elements so if you actually look here on the side where you're getting the heavier elements form we're even getting some silver okay um on on the side where the lighter elements are formed it's it's much much less you're getting mostly carbon nitrogen uh in there so have you considered that the, the, we're not getting energy out of these systems because uh, the best example I can give is the presentation given an ICCF 20 by uh, the late Dr. Mahadevan Srinivasan. They had a electric arc furnace at the 11 megawatt or 14 megawatt level running for 11 weeks in southern India, and it produced uh, three extra tons of silicon per day and one extra ton of iron per day every day for 11 weeks and there isn't a huge hole in India so it there must be some balancing going on so for instance hydrogen could be being synthesized by tearing matter apart and that's highly negative and carbon and oxygen are fusing together to form silicon for instance and that is uh, highly positive and it is through the yin yang process, which any five year old can conduct this experiment in 20 minutes, you get a balancing action. Uh, and so that that is my my point about you're observing both the production of a lighter element. I, I know in your case, you've actually starting with uh, nickel. So that is heavier than calcium. But in that reactor, am I?